My dearly beloved in Christ, one of the wonderful things about the season of Lent is that every day has its own proper Mass. So the weekdays of Lent, not only the Sundays, of course, but every day, so Monday through Friday, each day has a proper Mass with epistles and Gospels that we are not used to hearing. Beautiful stories from the Old Testament in many of the epistles or writings of the prophets. The Gospels with accounts that are not read on the Sundays during the year. And so I would like to encourage you during Lent, it would be a good Lenten practice, to simply take out your missal and read the epistle and gospel for each of the weekdays of Lent. And I would like to comment in today's sermon on today's gospel, but also I would like to begin with a comment on yesterday's gospel. So the gospel of the Saturday after the second Sunday of Lent is taken from the 15th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, and it is a parable, a story, that is, in my opinion, perhaps the most touching, beautiful story told by our Lord, and that is the one that we call the prodigal son. And the story goes like this. A man is well-to-do, has a nice farm and a number of servants, and he has two sons. And one day, the younger of these two sons approaches his father and says, Father, give me the portion of the inheritance that is to be mine. I would like it now. And the father is saddened by this, but he complies with the request of his younger son. And he gives him that portion of the inheritance which was to go to him. And shortly after that, the younger son takes that inheritance, takes that money, and leaves home. And he goes into a far country and falls among bad companions and lives a sinful life, really disgracing himself and the name of his family. And also he squanders all of this money. And after a period of time, he is now penniless. And so he needs to seek employment. So he goes and approaches a farmer of the area and asks to work for him. And he is employed feeding swine. Well, a famine comes over that whole region, and this young man is reduced to the point of tremendous hunger, to such a point that he even wants to eat the food that's given the swine to eat. That's how bad off he is. And in this state, he begins to reflect upon his wretched state and says to himself, I'm not worthy to be the son of my father, but I know what I'll do because he's such a good man. I will go back to him and I will fall on my knees and I will say, Father, I am not worthy to be called your child. At least let me be a servant in your home. Because he thinks to himself, the servants in my father's house are much better off than I am in this foreign land. So that's what he does. He returns to his home, and when the father sees him in a distance, he runs out to meet him. He embraces him and kisses him and says to a servant, go out, go and bring out the best robe that we have and put it on his shoulders and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and kill the fatted calf and make a banquet for we must celebrate because my son was lost and he is found again. It's as if he were dead and now he's alive. So the servant goes and tells the other servants they begin to prepare a wonderful banquet. Well, while these preparations are in progress, the older brother who was not aware of this was working at a far distant part of the farm, comes home, and as he's approaching the house, he hears the music and realizes there's a celebration in progress. And so he asks the servant, what's going on? And the servant tells him. And he is very angry and will not go in. So the father, the good father, goes out to him and says to his son, come in and let's celebrate because your brother has returned. And the older brother 
cannot understand this. He says, he has disgraced you. He has lived a sinful life. And now you're going to celebrate? And he said, and on top of that, you have never given me an animal that I might slaughter it and make a banquet and have a party for my friends. And now you're doing this for him after what he's done? And the father said to the older son, he said, you're always with me and everything I have is yours. But it is right that we should celebrate because your brother was, as it were, dead and he's alive again. He was lost and he has been found. Come in and join in the celebration. Now this wonderful parable, of course, is a figure of God the Father and the goodness, the love, the benevolence, the forgiveness that we find in God, the best of all fathers. As one spiritual writer points out, however, in one way, it does not adequately portray our Heavenly Father. Because if it were about God, the father in the parable would go chasing after his son after he ran away. But God does that with His grace, appealing to the mind and the heart of the sinner, to his conscience, to return. And is it not true that sometimes it happens when a person is really down and out, that he enters into himself and reflects upon his miserable state and then wants to return to the life of grace, to the sacraments. This is a wonderful parable anytime, but especially appropriate for the season of Lent. Because Lent is a time for conversion. It is a time for repentance. It is a time for turning back to Almighty God. Leaving sin and turning. That's what the word conversion means. To turn to Almighty God. But what we must especially be careful of avoiding is the sin of backsliding. Now in today's Gospel, we have the story of our Lord curing a man who was dumb and possessed by a devil. And our Lord drove out the devil and the dumb man began to speak. And the enemies of our Lord said, he casts out devils by the power of the devil, which of course is absurd. And our Lord points out the absurdity by telling them, if the devil fights against himself, how is his kingdom going to stand? But then he goes on to say, when the devil is driven out, he wanders through dry places in search of rest. And if he doesn't find any, he returns to the place out of which he was cast and tries to enter back. And if that person is not careful and allows the devil back in, he says, then the devil will bring seven other wicked spirits more evil than himself to dwell there. So what is the lesson here? We have to be careful to not backslide as we strive to amend our lives, to give up sin and the occasions of sin and to live a life of grace. Let us beware the danger of slipping back into sin because God's grace is precious and it must not be abused. St. Alphonsus Liguori in one of his books has a chapter on what he calls the number of sins. And after giving many quotes from the Old Testament to demonstrate that God has determined the number of sins that He will forgive each person, he goes on to explain what this means. That God will always forgive if the sinner is truly repentant. But, after a certain point, Almighty God will say, He's abusing my grace. I have given him or her so many opportunities of repentance, of confession, of the sacraments, of returning to a life of grace, and this person continues to abuse my grace. And there's a, per there's a point at which God will say, I'm going to withdraw those special graces from this person. And then he or she, perhaps, will no longer be sorry for sin and seek forgiveness. So we must not abuse the grace of Almighty God. And we must reflect upon the danger of backsliding. Falling back into sin once we have abandoned it. 
We must resolve to avoid the occasions of sin, to live a life of grace, of prayer, of frequentation of the sacraments, especially devotion to our Blessed Mother, to her rosary, a good daily prayer life, and again, avoiding danger. That young man in the parable of the prodigal son, the prodigal himself, had gone into a far country, and what happened? He fell among evil companions. And he who had been raised so well by his father now completely changed because of the company he kept. So we must flee the occasions of sin, whether it be persons, places, or things, and live a life of grace and always fear to backslide, to be ungrateful for what God has given to us and make certain that we make a use of it to love and serve him. And that is especially the theme for Lent, to convert, to turn to God once and for all, to give up sin forever and attach ourselves to our loving Father who is so good and benevolent. Let us not abuse that mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.